Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. I'm in my hometown of Mombasa, Kenya. And for many of us who grew up here, myself included, if we weren't at school or the mosque or at home, chances are we were at the Jaffrey Sports Club in Mombasa. Most of our childhood memories, I mean for all of us, our childhood memories were made here at, at the Jaffrey Sports Club, whether it was playing cricket or football or tennis, volleyball, squash, and, and so many other, other sports. Um, however, for most of us, the Jaffrey Sports Club was already there when we arrived on the scene. Uh, what happened prior, how it came to be, is why we're here today, and we want to get into the bottom of that. So, I am extremely excited and honored to have with us Brother Asaf Ghulam Hussain, who is also affectionately known as the historian of our community. He is here with us today to tell us how it all happened and how the Jaffrey Sports Club came to be over, over time. Asaf Uncle, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us today. Thank, thank you for you. getting me here. Thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> I, I don't think I can take pride in being the historian of the community. <laughs> but, well, the club has been close to my heart. Absolutely. And uh, let us see. I hope I can justify it. No, I, <laughs> I am I'm very excited for, for what you have to share with us today. So, um, I know that formally things sort of began in 1921. And we will come yeah. to that. But... Uh, what happened before that? Where were community members playing their sport and how far back did it begin? Well, we, we have a record of sports being played in Mombasa from 1910-1911. Wow, okay. And uh, it was quite fragmented in the sense that some used to play at our cemetery. And the, pl the portion that is that fronts on Haile Selassie Road. Yes, yes. Then, the place where used to be the Lotus Cinema. Mm -hmm. That was another place where a group of youngsters used to play. And third was what used to be called as the Buxton Ground. Okay. Which was situated behind Ambalal House. Ah. There, the patron of the lot playing there was late J.C. Jaffer. And that continued for well, about a decade or so. And what was being played? Only cricket and football. Just cricket and football. And, and obviously, as I was preparing for this episode, I, I saw all the dates and the years when, when things happened. So what happened in 1921? Well, 1921, four of our members had a vision. Mm -hmm. And these four have come to be known as the founding fathers of the then Isnashri Sports Club, which is now Jaffrey Sports Club. Right. These four were late Mullah Hasan Ali Khaki, late Abdullah Khalfan, late Habib Abdullah Jan Muhammad, and late Hussein Karim Hirji. Okay. They felt that with our youths playing at three different places, why not unite them under one umbrella? Mm. That will also, I imagine, their thought process was that it breed a sense of brotherhood Correct. amongst the youths. And that is what they did and the community supported that thought mm. process. And that is when the concept of Isnashri Sports Club came into being. Mm. Obviously, they needed a venue yes. for the club. Right. And at that point, late Kasmali Virji came forward and he gave his piece of land on which we now have the Life Corporation, Life Insurance Corporation of India building, okay. which amongst others houses Kaim Stationers. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and he gave that land for use by our youths. Right, and that lasted for well, four or five years. By that time, there was obviously a need for a more permanent solution. Correct, and the Jamaat managed to get 
this particular piece of land. Where we are till today? Yeah, yeah. where we are. It was originally on a uh, temporary occupational license, but it's now a freehold property attached to the government through the Mombasa Jamaat. Right. And that is how we moved here. And uh, the first banda, of the pavilion, was put up in 1925. Right. I think it costed about 1,500 shillings. That was a princely sum then. <laughs> but yeah. the community rallied together, collected the funds, yep. and they put up the pavilion. This place, you must understand, was a very rocky area. Right. And a lot of effort had to go into clearing that, in converting into a playing field. Right. And one must give credit to some people at the, of that time, like late Kasmali Mirali, late Hapi Abdullah Jan Muhammad, etc. They, they put in physical effort too to try and clear really? the ground into and create what we have now. So, that's, that is basically what happened. But you, must, you will have to, you know, we must recognize that the period 1921-22 will find a permanent place in the annals of Mombasa absolutely, Jamaat. Absolutely, absolutely. For I, the foresight of those four members has resulted in a legacy which we all shed, cherish. Absolutely, and we'll continue. And to, we'll continue to do, to so. do so, yes. Certainly. Um, <clears throat> how many members did the club start with back then in 1921? The figure being floated was between 40 and 50. And was there any membership fee? Yes, there was a fee of <laughs> four shillings per month. Four shillings a month, yeah. Uh, at that time, four shillings meant quite a bit. Excellent. Wow. Um, obviously, at some point, expansion was needed as the community grew, when did that happen? The first, I mean, after the Banda, obviously there was need for a proper constructed pavilion. Right. And that happened, uh, I think it was 1930. 1930, yes. Yeah. And we had a first well-constructed pavilion. The foundation stone, I think, was laid by late G. A. Datu. He made a handsome donation towards the cost also. Right. He was a very prominent member of our society in Mombasa, very well known. And that is how this started. There have been many improvements to the pavilion since then. Periodically, these have been done and now we're having a further improvement, which, will, which is under construction. Correct. Um, I'm guessing up until this point, it's still cricket and football. That is correct. Uh, were there any? Uh, what was the next sport to the be next to sport be introduced and when? To be introduced was tennis. Okay. And the first courts were uh, put up in 1936. Okay. Two courts were put up. Uh, I think the, at that time, in 1936, a bag of cement used to cost one shilling and fifty cents. <laughs> okay. And uh, again, late G. Adatu came to the fore. He was wow. the biggest donor at that time for this. Two quotes were put up and then one more was added later on, after a few years. There was a lot of demand. Yeah. And uh, that is why the third court was put up. Right. Football was being played. After that came the volleyball. Right. Originally, the volleyball court was right at the opposite side, mm -hmm. near the Extelcom office. Yes, correct. Right. It was later on moved to the present site. And again, this was also a very, very rocky area. Mm. And late, late A.H. Nazarali played an immense part in clearing that area so that a volleyball court could be put up there. Right. In, obviously, that 
the construction that happened then lasted out uh, from what I read about 30 years and then I think it was 19, 1961 when additional construction was done. I think uh, if I read correctly there was the, um, the cricket side screens, the scorers room, if I'm not the prayer room. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about, about that. The prayer room was donated by the Kashmali Gulamsin family in memory of Mamataki, late Mamataki and Lake Roshan uh, Kasim. They both had died in a car accident and the prayer room was actually put up by them in their memory. In 19, it was at that time when the second time the the uh, pavilion was yep. extended, etc. That was the first time that the Mombasa Sports Club team, cricket team, played an away match. Ah, okay. And they came to our ground right. to play against our team. And it was with a lot of fun and pomp. Of course. Because uh, that was so marked the opening of the new pavilion. Right. Oh, so the new pavilion was constructed then uh, yeah. as well. Yeah. And that, that, that was a very memorable thing. At that time, I think late Fidaus and Moledina was the chairman of the uh, club. Right. And I think he and late uh, Usain Jirat Jiva used their good offices to arrange this match. Excellent. Nice. Um, the canteen. I know I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> um, uh, the, the canteen, the scorer's room, you know, near the side screens, if I remember. Um, you know, I think those came up in the, in the early 70s. And I'm sure there were people behind, behind all of that. You know, who, who were these people? Well, in the early 70s, late Hussein Habib Abdullah Jan Mahmud would have played a part. Okay. All right, because again, he... He was an, a very regular cricketer. Right. He represented the club for many years. And uh, he took keen interest in this. And then, we're, well, I, I'm guessing at this point there's cricket, football, volleyball, tennis. And tennis, yeah. So four. Obviously, you know, when we arrived, when my generation or the generation before me, when they arrived on the scene, there were a lot more sports. Um, did they all come in around that time? Like say in the 70s, like, you know, then there's um, squash and I think badminton uh, with the facilities that we enjoyed. Uh, when did those come in? Right, you see, in order to have squash and badminton, which are known as indoor sports. Right. We required a constitutional amendment. Okay. This was affected because it was felt that squash and badminton were now recognized as uh, right. sports worth having. Yeah. And for the squash court, there was actually a charity walk, walk held. Okay. And the funds so collected were used to put up the squash court. Ah, and, and what year was, was this? Fool. Roughly? This must be in the late 60s or very, very early 70s. Interesting. Interesting. Late Jafarelli Merali was the biggest collector for that charity walk. I see. And obviously, with this institution of the, the Jaffrey Sports Club, there had to be some sort of admin or administration or guidance or governorship or whatever phrase we want to use. Uh, it was uh, always the, the managing committee. Of, yeah, how did that concept of chairman or who was the first the chairman? The first chairman was late Kasmali Mirali. Okay. All right. Uh, he was the first chairman and we have a role of chairman at the clubhouse. Right. All right. So there have been a varied people. Of course. Who have... Uh, contributed. The, the constitution of the club was originally written by late Muhammad Ali Dala, who was the secretary of the club at that time. And that put into place the, the, the requirements, you know, elections every year and right. this and that. 
and we used to have a managing committee and under that we used to have a sports committee which used to be chaired by the vice chairman of the club the sports secretary would be the secretary of that and all captains would be members of that mm, okay. so that they could discuss whatever problems whatever Correct. thing they needed to be done excellent um let's let's touch a little bit on the sports festival as we know it today um you know we've got one coming up in dubai uh at the end of yeah. this year in december yeah. uh when did this concept of the sports festival begin and uh, who did it involve well i mean it was the supreme council which initiated that and the first was held in dar es salaam in 1984 84 yeah wow it was hugely successful right uh, most east african jamaats participated uh very very well organized mombasa being the next biggest town right the owners fell on mombasa to hold it the following year yeah and uh, really it was between mombasa nairobi and dar es salaam uh, the see. three jamaats which could host host right had the facilities to host since then it has become much larger and dubai has done it about three three times already i think right if not and the no one more, yeah. yeah and there is one this december later on much much later they also introduced the ladies sports festival right that was usually done separately but this time it is being done at the same time as the men's Correct. sports festival in dubai and the sports being played was it similar i mean now i know we have golf and you know a lot of other sports but what originally was the... it was just cricket football tennis volleyball ah so those four then squash was uh added after that badminton was added and it is then it was golf yeah got added you know yeah. so it has expanded in its scope really it's so fascinating and interesting to 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 learn about the history um you know is there anything that i might have missed out that you want to that you want to add that would benefit our those watching well i mean this this club has produced some really good sportsmen right whether we have been able to give them credit at all times so not i am not sure let's mention a few of them uh, well to start with you look at yusuf karim yes of course and his son asif correct they had the distinction of representing kenya at two sports yeah. cricket and tennis and tennis yeah right then at a local level ahmad habib Abdullah Jan Muhammad later Ahmad and Sultan Noor Muhammad they represented Mumbai side cricket and football mm. right but in between you know besides them there have been good sportsmen i mean you look at somebody like Pierre Ali Kasmali it was always felt that he should have played for Kenya much more often than mm. he did that doesn't take away from him his capabilities of course right So yes we had we had a good crop of sportsmen later on what has happened is a lot of our youngsters migrated for Absolutely. education and whatever other reasons I'm guessing early 2000s yeah. probably yeah yeah and that has deprived this club of many lovely sports people right all right i can well understand you know the reasons for them migrating right that's that's fine and that is fair right so if our standards are not what they used to be it's because of that migration correct right. so that that has to be recognized you know w- what do you see i mean just in conclusion um what do you see as the future of i mean now that you we've highlighted this this the migration um what do you see as the next say 20 30 40 years for the It's club it's difficult to say what will happen in 20 30 years but for the present we still have a small crop of 
yes. youngsters who want to play football, volleyball and to an extent cricket. Tennis may have lost some interest. Okay. Right, within the sports people. But we still have, I'm sure, a few youngsters who would love to play tennis also. This will continue for a while, but how right. long is a million dollar question. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely million dollar because I don't know how many of these will migrate. I do not know and it's difficult to predict how long will the interest mm. be generated amongst them. Right. Over the years, a lot of people have made a lot of effort to keep, keep the boys interested in sports. Right. One of them happens to be Riaz Virji. Right. He used to have those coaching clinics and Saturday cricket. I and remember this that. And that. Saturday yeah. afternoon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, putting in your own time to right. make sure that kid, youngsters come and play. Right. It's not a mean thing. No, I mean, you absolutely. Know, it's, it, it's it needs to be recognized. 100%. Right. So, all these things. But predicting anything, I mean, who could have predicted that a club bubbling with activity would reach a stage where there would be activity, but... Not what it used to be. Not what it used to be. Right. I'll, I'll quote you an incident which yeah. happened in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. Late Hamid Bojani, the, chain, the then president of the Karachi Pirai Jamaat, had come on a visit to Mombasa. And I brought him to the club. At that time, at that moment, there were people, there was a cricket nets on. Right. There were some on the volleyball court. Right. And there were kids playing around and all that. And just as we were walking towards the pavilion, Hamid Bojani stopped and he said, Asaf bhai, give me this club and I'll give you anything you want. Wow. That tells you, right, that the club was the envy of other people. Mm. We are, we are the first Khoja Jamaat to have its own club. Correct. Yes, there was cricket played in Zanzibar. Yes. But there was no formal structure there. Mombasa was the first to have a formal structure. It's a legacy that worth being proud of. Absolutely. Uh, I know pre on present day, there's a lot of construction and, and you know, things getting torn down and coming up. Is there any plan to bring back, I mean, those who already know what's going on, is it's for them. Is there any, any plan to bring back the tennis courts, to bring back the Everything will bridge? come back. Really? Yes. We have enough room. There is enough room and uh, this is a pledge of the Jamaat. That it will that all come the, back. That the sports field will come back into action. So good to hear. Yeah. I thought it was all over. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. It will come back. We may, may not, I am not sure, we may not have a, as big a ground as we used to. Right. Slightly shortened. Yeah. But it would still be good enough. Excellent. It is, it is my hope that we can sit down once again in the future and talk about what happened after the mid-80s. Uh, after my generation arrived on the scene, there's so much more to discuss, especially when we get into the sports. But I do, I do thank you for your time and, and your knowledge and, and, and being here with us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Rizwan. It was a pleasure. If I can be of service again. Thank you. Asan, thank you so much, Asaf Uncle. Well, Fine. there you have it. I hope you benefited from, from this episode and uh, were able to learn a little bit about our history and uh, where, we, where we came from and how the Jeffrey Sports Club evolved over time. Uh, thank you so much for, for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.